A loaded car float has just arrived at the Long Island Railroad Montauk branch. The tug Mitoax slowly backs away, its job complete for the moment. In the background, RS-1 number 469 waits for the signal to start unloading the float. But how did these cars get here? There are two answers to that question. The model railroading answer and the real world answer. The model railroading answer involves a spreadsheet and my fairly extensive knowledge of Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA. In this overall view, you can see the controlling buttons at the top left, with a list of cars beneath it. The list shows the car's identification, its type, current location, scheduled location, lading, empty weight, and loaded weight. These last two are necessary for determining how to load the car float, which we're not going to go into right now. To the right of that is a tool to assist in loading the car float to ensure even weight distribution. The spreadsheet is able to make a pretty accurate guess, but the operator has final say, of course. Below that is a simple summary of where all the cars are to assist with error checking. The buttons provide a method to automatically generate a train order, a car float loading order, and a car float unloading order. The first two will be addressed in later videos, so stay tuned. There are also buttons to tell the spreadsheet when each event has been completed. The spreadsheet keeps track of where every car is and ensures that only eligible cars are used for each type of order. For example, only cars that are off-board can be included in a car float unloading order. Push the button to generate the order, and the coding behind the spreadsheet randomly selects 11 cars, which is the capacity of the car float, and brings them to the top of the list. This list can either be printed out, or usually I just take a picture of it. For anyone who might be interested, here's what the code looks like behind the spreadsheet. Did you get all that? The real world answer is somewhat complex, but I will summarize as best I can. Generally, all the freight cars coming into the Long Island Railroad come from the Pennsylvania Railroad's Greenville Yard in New Jersey. The only fully rail access to Long Island is via the New Haven Railroad over the Hellgate Bridge. Trains coming from the west would have to detour over a hundred miles to reach the southern end of Long Island. At the time, it was found that car floats across the harbor were more cost-effective. Floats from Greenville would either go to Bay Ridge, jointly served by both the Long Island Railroad and the New Haven, through a conglomerate called the New York Connecting Railroad, or they would go to the Long Island Railroad's Long Island City Yard, which had six float aprons. With a bit of artistic license, I am only modeling one of these. Here's where things get a bit murky. It is my belief that the Long Island City Yard was only used for passenger cars, as it is today. Some freight was sorted at Yard A, which is a small yard adjacent to the Pennsylvania Railroad's rather large Sunnyside Yard, while freight destined for customers along the Montauk branch was sent to Bliss Yard, which is what I model. In its day, Bliss Yard was much larger than it is now, of course. The industries I model are here in Blissville which is perhaps the most inappropriately named place in the world. Further down than Newton Creek and Maspeth, and a little further away in lovely Bushwick. All my industries are real, in that they actually existed at one time along this route, but some have been moved a bit either in space or time to fit in my period of the mid-1960s. This rolling cart holds all the off-board cars for the layout. To load the car float, I simply check my list, roll the cart over to the float, and start placing the cars on the rails in no particular order. In reality, they would have been loaded in Greenville to ensure even weight distribution, but there's no reason to model that on the incoming cars because I don't even know what their destinations are or their lading at this point. This is fine as it adds a little randomness to operations. Once the cars are in place, the unloading can begin. Engine 469 and its reach car approach the ramp to the float apron. 469 is an Atlas Silver Series Alco RS1 painted in the Lure World's Fair scheme. I installed a Soundtrack Tsunami 2 decoder, Keep Alive, and speaker. Lure generally use Alco switchers to service their car floats, but I don't have one yet. Lure used reach cars, and this one is patterned after a prototype shown on page 71 of Waterfront Railroads of New York Harbor, Volume 2, by Robert J. Yanosi. 
After a brief stop for the crew to ensure everything is ready, the unloading begins. Car floats must be loaded and unloaded in a specific manner to keep them balanced and prevent them from capsizing. As you can see, the car float has three tracks. The center track is accessed via the outboard track on the left. To unload the float, first take half the cars from the outboard track that provides access to the center track. In this case, two cars. This leaves the float overbalanced on the opposite side by two cars. Then take all four cars from the other outboard track. This leaves the float overbalanced by two cars on the original side. Then take the remaining two cars from the first side, finishing by taking the three cars from the center track. To load the float, the process is essentially reversed. Now let's watch the process in action. You'll note that I take cars to the yard in two separate cuts, but that's because of my particular space limitations.